So what if I told you that seeing celebrities for free in London was actually not that hard? Hey everyone, I'm Sunny, an American living in London, and I make videos about behind the scenes of London's food, life, events, and culture. In this video, I'll share the general process for seeing celebrities through attending television show recordings, and you'll learn how to get tickets, what happens when you go, and a huge mistake that I made recently when I went to one of the shows. You'll find most television show program recordings happen in either Hollywood, New York, and London. Please add in the comments how your experience attending television show recordings is similar, and then also ask me any questions about mine that you think I can answer for you. This video is mostly based on our recent attendance at a Graham Norton television show recording, but I'll talk specifically about that show at the end. Here's the basic process that happens in London and Hollywood that really I don't think has changed in the past 13 years. First, you're probably going to have to travel into the greater area of the city, and this is because your bigger shows require bigger sound stages. For example, The Masked Singer UK is shot at the RAF airfield in Bovingen, which is in Hertfordshire. Whereas the BBC's One show is filmed right in central London at the BBC Broadcasting House. Tickets are free and organized by a separate company. You want to see my blog post, which is linked in the description that will include the big companies where you can get tickets from in London. You apply online and then you get an email typically a week or a few days ahead of time letting you know if you've been successful. So keep an eye on your junk mail. When you get that email, read every word because you will find information about procedures and there will also be a declaration that says that the attachment containing the tickets doesn't mean you actually have tickets. These tickets are not like theater tickets or airline tickets. Most, they overbook the shows due to the percentage of no shows. People tend to care less about tickets that are free or when they find out who the celebrities are and maybe they don't like them, they decide not to show up. Also, stars can be unpredictable. I learned that the most when I worked at VIP tours at Universal Studios in Florida, but stars can be kind of feisty and demanding and they could cancel their appearance at the last minute. Current events can also change show schedules and also, hello, there was a pandemic. If you'd like to stay current with everything happening in London, follow me on my social media and all those links are below. Be prepared for anything if you do get tickets, like the show could be canceled or the star could cancel, and that's kind of what happened to me. Also, that remember that a selection of tickets can go to the production crew or the celebrity that's appearing could request them. So if that happens and you're just a general audience member, then no tickets for you. And that happened to me once in Hollywood also. So even if you have a ticket, it could still be based on first come, first served in the queue for ticket distribution. And it can depend on who you are, how you look, and maybe how you act while you're waiting in line. So show up to queue well before that time is indicated on your email. How do you judge the time? Determine the popularity of the show that you're seeing and the celebrities who are supposed to be there that evening. Assuming you do have the chance to get in, the first thing you will do is go through a security search. Don't expect the studio doors to open at the exact time that the email indicated that they would. They are generally late. You probably won't be seated as an audience member according to the time that you arrive. They generally seat people according to how they fit into the target audience age and appearance. If you aren't dressed appropriately to the look that they target, or you're wearing colors that they suggest you don't wear in your email, then back of the studio for you. Try to be pleasant and smile a lot while you're waiting in the queue because they're gonna be looking for people like that to show when they pan the camera across the audience. For the most part, you can take all the photos you want before they start recording. This was not the case when I first attended television shows in Hollywood, but I think social media has changed that significantly. I actually had the opportunity privately to attend a recording of the Netflix show, The Crown. This is not something that you can apply for online. To go, I had to sign like a five page NDA ahead of time. That's a non-disclosure agreement. I didn't have to do that for the Graham Norton show or any other like weekly entertainment talk show that I've attended. 
The recording will not start on time. However, you can look forward to a warm-up comedian who, in my experience, is really funny. Keep in mind, this is a working production, so a camera could move in front of you and be stationary for a significant period of time, but there are monitors above that you can watch the show as it happens. If it's your first time, you're going to be really surprised at how small everything is, especially the show host and celebrities. However, the cameras and the cranes and jibs that they use are ginormous. It's way more enjoyable if you're a true fan of the show. It also helps if you have pretty good control of your bladder because there are no bathroom breaks. Be prepared that it could run really long. In fact, the night we went to see the Graham Norton show, the recording lasted twice as long as the actual television show. The second the director decides that he or she has enough for the recording and it's over, the production crew will begin striking the set immediately. That is the one thing that they do at lightning speed and on time in every recording I've been to. And the show will actually air later that evening or the next day. So here's our experience at the Graham Norton show. We attended on the 27th of January, and this was just days after major COVID restrictions dropped. It also is in winter, so there probably aren't many tourists in London at that time either. We entered three possible dates where we could attend, and we also had to enter our age when we applied online. You have to be 18 to go to these shows. The Graham Norton Show is filmed at BBC Television Centre in West London in White City. We chose to drive from North London and parked at the Westfield Shopping Centre. I suggest parking by John Lewis. We arrived at 3.15pm, so it cost us about £8.50. If you take the underground, literally Wood Lane Station is across from the Television Centre. We talked quickly to security staff outside about generally what happens, and based on that conversation, we decided to arrive about 15 to 20 minutes before our email suggested. We had a quick and super expensive round of drinks at the Broadcaster. Then we chose to go to Home Slice, which is a pizza place that I have done a collaboration with previously, and I love their pizza, but they didn't open until 4 p.m. We later learned that most people use their restaurant discounts after the recording. At 5 p.m., we walked over to the security area where a queue of about 75 to 100 people had already formed. I showed the QR code for our tickets via my mobile. We each got a wristband, we had our temperatures checked, and then we went over to security. Then we received another wristband, and then we waited outside for about an hour in an uncovered area. This is the only time I actually was glad it got dark early in London because if I was waiting outside in a hot summer day in London where the sun was pounding on my head, that would have been really difficult. I'm also glad it wasn't raining that day. Mr. Sunny speculated that about 20 people who arrived maybe after around 545 were not admitted. People with purple or violet wristbands were called to go in first. I'm guessing these were the priority seat ticket holders. And again, I think these were the people who offered a red chair experience. They moved us in by rows. So if you were A, you went in, then B, then C, and it seemed to be like how everybody was order in line. And then we realized uh, once we got inside that our uh, wristbands actually had our seat numbers on them. Once inside and in our seats, it was about 6.20. We watched for about a half an hour while the production crew was still getting ready. The warm-up comedian was amazing and did a lot of audience interaction, which for the most part was voluntary. We learned seconds before the cameras went live that the A-list celebrity that was supposed to be there was only joining us via Zoom. And when it was announced, you could like feel the excitement of the audience drop a few levels. But the stars who were there in person were really great. We were trapped in our seats till 9 p.m. with no breaks. They filmed the musician twice for reasons I really don't know. And then once the celebrity guests were escorted off the set, Graham continued to film things called trails. This meant he was basically shooting intros, like um, introducing the stars that were gonna be there, or make sure you watch tonight on BBC, or, or watch on three, or BBC America. Audience members really didn't need to stay for those promos. 
And Mr. Sonny and I, since both of us have worked in the business, we understood what was going on, but I don't think the people behind us did because when Graham Norton said, uh, BBC America, watch tonight, uh, the people behind us giggled and I think they thought he was trying to be funny or make a mistake, but he literally was shooting his promos for all the places where his show is syndicated. You know, maybe they could have explained it to the audience for the people who, you know, weren't like me and didn't have industry experience. They also filmed like cutaways of the musician waving so they could show it like as they introduced her. They also had to reshoot a small section because there was a continuity error in the filming. Apparently a book Graham Norton had used in the show's opening was moved throughout the recording so they had to move it back and reshoot a small section of the show. It was interesting to see how quickly they knew what to reshoot to make the final edit fast and seamless. Graham Norton a few times got directions in his earpiece and again, he flawlessly jumped right into the retakes and knew exactly what he needed to say to fill in these missing gaps. So the big reveal, my big mistake, was having that huge meal and filling up my water bottle entirely before the show recording started because I sat there for two hours. I never dreamed the recording would last that long. A tip for you if you want to have a really good seat and potentially some national screen time is to prepare, create, recall, whatever, a really good red chair story and send that to them ahead of time. For more tips on London behind the scenes, keep watching the sunny news and subscribe to the email so you're notified every Sunday when a new video comes out. See you in the next video.